when she was Ms. Marvel. Oh my god. I am Ms. Marvel. Um, is it too late to change my mind? It's like my skin is one big muscle and that muscle has tensed up. Wake up, Kamala. Wake up, wake up. It is not a pleasant feeling. Oh man, I'm gonna puke. Now the big muscle, let's go. Everything feels all loose and jittery, unstable. My body feels like it's bubbling, going gooey. What? I look down at myself. I'm me again. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. I'm... Now my top half is Crimson old school superhero, and my bottom is my normal jeans and kicks. It feels like there's a mask over most of my face. Ah, this is not happening! But it is happening. This is what I asked for, right? So why don't I feel strong and confident and beautiful? Why do I just feel freaked out and underdressed? I don't recognize the street. I must have wandered off and fainted. I've got to get back to the river. I can follow the bike path toward downtown. I can go home. I can fix this. Something is wrong. It's not just me. It's the mist that's shrouding everything. It doesn't smell like air. It doesn't even have a smell, really. But if it did, it would smell like secrets. I made it to the river, anyway. Down below, about 20 feet of concrete stairs, there's the bike path, and a rickety-looking dock juts out into the water. Manhattan across the way looks like a ghost city rising up out of the mist. Helicopters are training search beams down into the blue-green fog. What just happened? Was that for real? Did somebody put something weird in my drink? At this point, I'm kidding myself. Of course it was real. Terrifyingly real. Right down to the horrific realization that a superhero costume does not include underwear. I wonder if I can do it again. This time on purpose. Transform! Nope. Whoa. I see a flying red streak zip by in the sky overhead. Iron Man? Looks like I'm not the only one freaking out about this weird-ass fog. Could it be that what just happened to me is part of something... bigger? (gasps) Great. It's Zoe and Josh out on the dock. And I just want you to know I love Sue. Don't call me Zoo. The party must be winding down. I duck behind a bush. I really can't deal with Zoe right now. Not again. I'm in costume again. It's like a reflex, like a fake smile. As soon as Zoe shows up, I feel like I have to be someone else. Someone cool. Look at the city. You'd think that by pretending to be cool, I would feel cool. So beautiful. But instead, I feel... Small. That was a neat trick. The bush next to me seems like an enormous tree with giant leaves. Everything is humongous, including... Oh my god! Giant, giant cockroach! What was that? Did you hear something? Uh, here, you love me too! Come on, babe, dance with me, huh? Uh, no way, you smell like cheap beer. Dance on top with my baby! Josh, stop, I'm gonna be sick! Josh, stop it! I want my jacket! Oh, you scared you're gonna fall? Don't worry, baby! I'm never gonna let you... Ah! Zoe? <gasps> Zoe! Oh my god! Oh my god! I can't! I can't! Where? Stop waving your arms around! Just reach for my hand! Zoe goes completely under. Zoe! She's not coming back up. There's this ayah from the Quran that my dad always quotes when he sees something bad on TV a fire or a flood or a bombing. 
He always points out the emergency response people, the EMTs and the firemen and stuff. And he says, God says, whoever kills one person, it is as if he has killed all of mankind. And whoever saves one person, it is as if he has saved all of mankind. When I was a little kid, that always made me feel better. Because no matter how bad things get, there are always people who rush in to help. And according to my dad, they are blessed. I just made my hand the size of a steam shovel. I plunged my impossibly stretchy arm into where I last saw Zoe. And scoop up a massive amount of disgusting riverbed. In the middle of which... is Zoe. It's okay. I've got you. What? What? You no way, Kids from the party have wandered down the path, just in time to see me set Zoe down on the dock next to Josh. Are you okay? Can you breathe? Yeah, I'm okay. All three party kids have their smartphones out. Great. Oh my god, your old costume. It looks great. Can we get your autograph? I, uh... You, you saved me. I am never going to get wasted ever again. Uh, not to sound lame, but, um, what's up with your arm? Uh, what the what? My arm is still jumbo-sized. I gotta go. Wait! Hey! Oh, man, this is still so going on YouTube. I pound down the path, lugging my giant colossal arm against my chest like a bag of flour. When I daydream about the Avengers, this is not how I picture it. This hand thing is getting out of hand. Great. I make bad puns now. Come on. Get normal-sized. Disembiggen. Hey. It's like having a completely new sense. It's not sight or taste or touch. It's something much weirder. Something almost... inhuman. Ugh. But being someone else isn't liberating. It's exhausting. Mm. I take a good look at a lock of this long blonde hair I've got. I always thought that if I had amazing hair, if I could pull off great boots, if I could fly, that would make me feel strong. That would make me happy. But the hair gets in my face. The boots pinch, and worst of all, this leotard is giving me an epic wedgie. What made me happy, huh? What made me happy was seeing Zoe take a breath of air. Even though she makes everybody feel like crap, I'm glad I was there. I'm glad she lived. And having the strength to step in and help didn't come from this face or this hair or this costume. It came from me. Ah, beautiful! Nice knees. <laughs> this is rapidly becoming no fun at all. The homeless guy has a hoodie hanging from his shopping cart. Um, can I borrow this? Uh, you bet. Thanks. Chill it out. Girl, maybe you ought to think about putting on some pants. Home. I have to get home. <sighs> Yikes, lights are on upstairs. Abu and Ami are still up. Okay, this is where I admit I've only ever snuck out twice before in my life. Once when I was 10, just to see if I could actually get down the tree in one piece. And then once freshman year to see the midnight showing of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows with Nakia and Bruno. And what I discovered was this. Sneaking in is way harder than sneaking out. Kamala? Is that you? Crap. Kamala? Kamala. I'm Kamala. Kamala has dark hair and dark eyes and is sort of short and has never actually owned a pair of thigh-high boots. Amir, I can explain. 
What are you wearing? What's going on? It's me, your sister. What you're seeing is some sort of weird subconscious projection thingy. I'm not actually blonde. Blonde? What are you talking about? <gasps> it worked. I can do the shape shifty thingy on purpose. <gasps> this is a legit thing. I have freaking powers. Now I'm worried. Amir takes my hands, which may actually qualify as the strangest thing that's happened to me all night. Did something happen tonight? Yeah, something happened. Something really, really weird. It's gonna be okay. <gasps> I'll get the brothers from the mosque and we'll beat the ever-loving snot out of whoever hurt you. What? No, it was nothing like that. I'm fine. Oh, in that case, you're screwed because Abu and Ami know you snuck out. What? <laughs> How? How did you know? Bruno called us. He was worried sick about you. He said you'd disappear from this shaitani party alone and wouldn't answer him. Bruno told on me? What is this, sixth grade? Bruno is the least of your troubles, young lady. Do you realize what your mother and I suffered, sitting by the phone, waiting for a call from the police to tell us something terrible that happened to our daughter? It was a party. It was nothing. Nothing? Then where did you get this? Oh, I forgot I was wearing this nasty hoodie. I'm disappointed in you, Betty. Very disappointed. You disobeyed me. And worse, you put yourself at risk. You have no idea what I've been through tonight. Abu takes me gently by the shoulders. Then tell me, Janu. Tell me why my precious Kamala has suddenly become a reckless, disobedient girl I barely recognize. What do I say? I fell into a coma and woke up as Ms. Marvel? I saved Zoe Zimmer's flaky hair-flipping life? He won't understand. He can't understand. He'll freak. I'm sorry I disobeyed you, Abu. There's just a lot of stuff going on in my life right now, and I can't talk about it. Not yet. Not until I figured it out on my own. That's what you have to say? You are figuring it out? Have I raised my daughter to hide things from her parents? Calm down, Ami. This is your fault, Abu Jan. You're the one who brought us to this country. You see how the children have turned up? See? One sneaks out to parties with boys, and the other dresses like a penniless mullah. Here we go again. Ugh, it's too late for this discussion. I'm going to bed. I suggest the rest of you do the same. As for you, young lady, from now on, your life is school and home. No mall, no movies, no parties. Not until you prove we can trust you on your own. Am I making myself clear? Yes, Abu. Night, sis. I'll pray for you. <sighs> Fabulous. I look up at the Captain Marvel poster on my wall. This has to mean something. This has to have happened for a reason. I saved one life. Does it stop there? Or do I go on? I look down at my arm and make a fist. Maybe this is what I've been waiting for. Maybe I'm finally part of something bigger. <laughs>